Hello, today I'm here to talk to you about our very last day of algebra review, our last set of notes for such, and that is over multi-step equations. So diving right in. I'm going to work through this much the same as I normally have. The first thing that we talked about with these multi-step equations was the steps, because what makes multi-step equations difficult is not that the math involved is particularly hard. Adding two numbers, subtracting two numbers, multiplying two numbers, dividing two numbers. That's the kind of math we're gonna be looking at for the most part. So what does make them hard? Well, it might be because it's hard to see exactly what direction we need to take each time we look at one, especially because they all come in different forms and different complexities. However, these steps in general should help you solve all, if not all, the majority of multi-step equations. So the first step is, if necessary, simplify both sides of the equation. So if there's like terms that you can combine, combine them. If you can distribute something, distribute it. Next, you want to get all variable terms on one side of the equation. So if you have an x on the left and an x on the right, you need to get those x's only on the left or only on the right. Whichever side you choose will work out. It just may make your numbers a little nicer or a little messier. After you have that all squared away, then you get to the stuff that we were talking about yesterday with isolating variables. First, you want to make sure that you're focusing on adding and subtracting, then multiplying and dividing, which is why they look like the same step, but they're actually two separate steps. You want to do three before you do four. And lastly, this one has a star because it's technically optional you can check your solution using substitution. I always like to know if I'm right, so I like to check my work, but I won't expect everyone to check every problem they ever do in this class, because it would be a little unrealistic. So let's get started looking at an example where we combine like terms. So the first thing that I did after writing out 3x plus 5x plus 4 minus x plus 7 equals 88, as I went in and I boxed my variable terms with a pink highlighter and I circled my constant terms with a blue highlighter, maybe green, it's hard to tell. From here, I was able to easily see that I needed to add 3 plus 5 to make 8 and then subtract 1 to make 7x and then add four and seven to make 11. After I had combined my like terms, I checked and made sure that I only had my variables on one side of the equation, and then I could move on to isolating the variable using the addition or subtraction properties of equality. That's what the POE stands for. So because I'm working with addition and subtraction first, I'm going to move this positive 11 first. By subtracting 11 from both sides of the equation, I get 7x equals 77. I no longer have any addition and subtraction going on, so I move on to step number four, where I isolate my variable using multiplication and division properties of equality. 7 times x means I have to divide by 7 on both sides, giving me x equals 11. In purple, I checked my work by substituting 11 for x in the original equation. And when I simplified fully, I found that my answer was correct because I made a true statement. 88 does indeed equal 88. For my next example, I looked at one where I had to distribute. So for this one, it's a little bit hard to see since I had already written over it, but I started off with negative parentheses a plus six 
equals 36. So the main thing to note here is that there is no number on the outside that we can see. There's a negative sign. And so that trips up people a lot of the time. They think, well, there's no number. I don't have to distribute anything. Isn't that the same as saying minus a plus six? And the problem with that is if we plug in, say, a equals one, negative one plus six, let's check, does that equal minus one plus six? One plus six is seven, meaning that would give me a negative seven. Whereas on this side, negative one plus six gives me five. So we can see that those are very much not the same thing. And no matter what I put in for A, I would probably be getting the same result, that it would not be equal. So we wanna make sure that we're not thinking that these two are equivalent. And instead, we know we have to distribute the negative one to both sides of the equation. Because negative one, ooh, like a right, negative one minus six, as if I distributed it to the both side. I can't speak English. If I distributed it to both sides of the equation, I would get negative seven, which is equal. Hopefully that didn't confuse more than it explained. Sometimes when I trip up over my words, it can get a little bit difficult. But here, I also wrote in that Whenever there's a negative sign, we can imagine it's like being multiplied by negative one. So if we distribute that negative one to both terms, it'll change the sign to negative a minus six. After that, I'm on to isolating the variable using addition and subtraction. So I add six to both sides, leaving me with negative a equals 42. Some people might get a little confused here and go, okay, there's there's no more numbers on A, so I'm all done. Clearly, you can see that there's an extra step to be taken here because that negative needs to go away for us to be done. Since that negative one is being multiplied to both sides, I divide out a negative one, and that'll give me A equals negative 42. I checked that work by plugging negative 42 back in. I got negative negative 36, which is positive 36. And I saw that my answer was right. Last but not least, I did an example where we had a variable on both sides of the equation. Here I started with 6x plus 5 equals 10 plus 5x. Whenever you have variables on both sides of the equation, it can be hard to decide which one to move because in actuality, it doesn't matter you'll get the right answer as long as you do your math correctly either way. So I always like to choose the one that'll make my numbers a little bit nicer. And I think that positive numbers are nicer to work with than negative because we're so used to them. So I chose to move 5x to keep my numbers positive. So I undid the po um, positive 5x of the negative, and that left me with x plus 5 equals 10. Then all I had to do was subtract five from both sides, and I got x equals five. I checked my work by plugging five in for x, and I got 35 equals 35, so I know I did my math correctly. Now this is just three examples of solving multi-step equations. There are hundreds and thousands out there, and I included the site that I took a lot of these examples and notes from in the day four class folder. So you can check that out. It's a web page called Solving Multi-Step Equations by the Monterey Institute, Institute if I could speak. Um, and it's got some really great examples that are in boxes labeled green. So you can kind of quickly scroll through and just stop at the example boxes to take a look at those. And you can always look up solving multi-step equations on Google or YouTube, and you'll find tons and tons of extra resources out there if these notes in this video didn't quite cut it. 
So I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Just remember to complete assignment three. That should be in the same folder as this video. And have a good Thursday. I'll see you Friday.